Hello and welcome to the first edition of this year's um, math videos. Uh, we'll be focusing primarily on review questions uh, from your various chapters. Uh, so for this video we have chapter 4 uh, review questions number 11, 12, 15, 19, 24, 25, and 28 through to number 30. The reason why we uh, chose these questions or sorry, I, I chose these questions is because these are the ones that involve the most um, uh, calculations and these are the ones that we'll be focusing on on the test. Not that the other ones are not important and I encourage that you do all the review questions, but these are the ones that um, I feel are really a little bit more difficult and, and should uh, be covered here. So here we go. Um, we're going to start with number 11B. Uh, again, I'll be doing all the questions uh, version B only or sometimes B and D. Uh, reason being that I want to make sure that you guys still get a chance to do your own question and just not have to follow through my own examples here. Okay, So here we go, number 11b, uh, we're looking to simplify the third root of 135. Uh, as such, we're going to start with uh, prime factorization of that number, so 135. And we're going to divide it by, let's see here, 3. And so we'll get 45. And then we divide by 3 again, we get 15. And if we divide by 3 again, we'll get 5. And so you can see that these three threes actually makes for a perfect cube, which is good because um, that's what we need to do to simplify. So the next step here I'm going to write down is uh, this is the equivalent to the cube root of 3 times 3 times 3, which of course is 27. But there's really no need for you to write that down because it's just going to be simplify anyways. So the third root of 3 times 3 times 3 is just 3 and you get 3 and then the third root of 5. And that's your answer. So um, we have done this question quite a bit. Um, it's one of those that you have to be able to do um, because it does count on a skill that you have learned previously in chapter 3 that is the prime factorization. Uh, so next up is 12b. We're looking at the third root of 14. Um, it's the reverse of what we just did because what we did was write our entire radical as a mixed radical. Now we're given a mixed radical. We're trying to make an entire radical. Um, both of these have their own uses and we'll talk more about that as we get to num num number 15. But for now, what we want to do is to go ahead and rewrite 3 as the square root of something. And you will note that 3 is equal to the square root of 9. So I'm going to rewrite this as square root of 9. And I do that just so every part of the number will be under the same root. So in this case, square root. And then I have 9 times 14, which is 126. Okay, I, I don't know if that's right. <laughs> I should. I'm a math teacher, but eh, better safe than sorry. Oh, it is 126. Okay, that's good. So if we keep going here to the next question, it will be number 15. And we're supposed to sort these numbers. They're all radicals, um, mixed radicals, uh, from greatest to least. So uh, the best way to do this question, or the easiest way in my own opinion, is if I just write every one of these as entire radical, just like what I did for number uh, 12 over here then I can compare these numbers. So without using calculate, without having to use the calculators is how I go, can go about doing this question. So I have, instead of the uh, 5 times root 2, I can rewrite this as the square root of 25 times the square root of 2, and that will be the square root of 50. Next number, 4 times root 3. That will be the square root of 16 times square root of 3, which is, um, I think, one of the questions we actually did in class, and that will be the square root of 48. And you can already see that we can directly compare these numbers, and clearly fourth root of, sorry, 4 times root 3 is uh, less than 5 times root 2, because uh, you can see that square root 48 is less than 50. So it does allow us to make a direct comparison of the numbers. I'm going to keep going. So this is the square root of 9 times the square root of 6. 9 times 6 is 54. And you're not 
going to be expected to just come with the numbers like in your head as as you go. Um, obviously, I had a little bit of time to prepare before I made this video, so um, I can get through these a little bit quicker because I'm trying to keep this video to be uh, 15 minutes or less. So this will be root 28. And finally, I have 6 times the square root of 2. Uh, the 6 can be written as the square root of 36 multiplied by root 2, and that will give you uh, 72 square root of. Uh, so if I'm going to sort these numbers from greatest to least, the greatest one is uh, the last one, actually. Then this number is second, uh, third, fourth, and fifth. There you go. Um, okay, that's color is a little bit hard to read, so maybe. Okay. Hmm. Now, hopefully, you can see it when when I post this on YouTube. But as I was recording, this doesn't look too good. But hopefully, it will turn out fine. Okay. So, moving on to number nineteen, nineteen uh, B. Um, there were some questions in class about well, how do I handle uh, decimals? And and one of the ways you can do that is you can change the decimal questions into fraction questions, which is what I'm going to do here first. I'm going to rewrite this as um, 144 over 100 to the half power. Okay. So then the second thing we need to do is to kind of figure out what does this one half power do. And what it does is makes us take the square root of what's inside, so 144 over 100. And of course, that means you have to take the square root of both top part and the bottom part. So you have a square root of 144 over the square root of 100. And that would just be 12 over 10. OK. Oh, and if you want, you can rewrite this as 1.2 afterwards. So that, that way, you can do this whole thing without a calculator. and or having without to you know know a lot about square root decimals and things like that. Okay. Um, I, I was going to do one more of 19 uh, because I think people kind of struggle with the idea of a rational exponent more so than a negative one. Um, negative one, you just have to take the reciprocal, but here you have to consider power and roots, which is a little bit more. All right. So um, we have three over two as our exponent, which means we do two things. And on your quiz, people actually did quite well on this part. So you're supposed to take the square root of 9 over 16 and then cube it. And such, you will take the square root of the individual parts. That means you get uh, 3 over 4 because the square root of 9 is 3. Uh, the square root of 16 is 4. And then you have the cube. So 3 cube is 27 and 4 cube is 64. So um, we got one more, actually a couple more of the um, ones with our, with our variables. Um, our last three questions are the ones with variables. Oh, actually, it's just two of them here and here. But we'll keep going. Uh, this time we have a negative exponent. It is negative 3, so I'm going to point it out to you. Ta-da, it's negative. So what does it mean? Well, remember what we did in class is that I want you guys to separate the exponent into two parts, negative 1 and 3. And so if you do the power first, the 3 first, um, you'll cube each number. 2 cube is going to be 8, and 3 cube is 27. And then you have to do the negative 1 power, which means your answer is going to be, it's going to leave some space here, uh, 27 over 8. Okay. Maybe I just fix my 7 here. There we go. OK. Uh, next one. Now, uh, for every section of the notes, we did do these formula questions. But I didn't spend a lot of time you know, being very diligent in talking about them. Uh, the main reason is um, they, they're pretty self-explanatory. as you just plug in the numbers, and, and you kind of evaluate on your calculator. Um, but Depending on what calculator you use, there can be some tricky parts to it. So, uh, for example, most calculator handles 
you doing this part first and then multiplying by a thousand better than if you just plug the whole thing in. So anyways, I'm just going to show you what it looks like on a calculator. Here's mine. Very basic. 1.0325 to the negative 3. So let's try it this way. There we go. And it's equal to uh, this number. I'm going to multiply by a thousand afterwards because it says to multiply by a thousand there. And you get $988.51. Alright, cool. Just want to make sure that I get one of these examples in. Okay. And now, the hard part, so to speak. Um, Alright, so here, the first thing I'm going to do is um, try to resolve everything that's inside the brackets. So I have x squared, and then no other x's, so that's good, I guess. And then I have y to the 1 power. Always remember this says 1. And then I have a negative 2 at the bottom. So what I can do is I still have x squared. That doesn't change. But then the y's I can kind of combine together. So 1 and then minus negative 2. Okay. So remember that it being the denominator and this part being in the numerator means that you subtract the exponent because um, the, the fraction line means that you're dividing. So if you subtract 1 minus negative 2, that's going to be 3. So I have x squared y cubed uh, to the negative 2 power. And I'm just going to make it so that's negative 1 times 2. That way um, I can do it separately. So I have x squared times, sorry, x squared and then squared because there's 2 outside. And then I have y and then cubed squared which means you just multiply the exponents together, as I've written down here. All right, so I have x to the fourth power, y to the sixth power, and it's all to the negative one. And remember, I, I cannot have negative exponents, so I'm just going to put these in the denominator. And that's it. All right, so I'm just going to slide this over, because I anticipate that 29b is going to take like a lot of space. But hopefully not. Hopefully it's not as bad as it looks. Okay. 29B. I have, again, I'm going to put the like terms together, so to speak. I have two powers of um, with base x and two powers of base y. So I can put those together, which is good. And so I have x to the 1 half uh, plus 3 over 2. Okay, be careful to not multiply the exponents here because you're you're just multiplying them together. So you do add the exponents only. And then I have y to the 1 um, plus negative 2. Okay, so what happens here? 1 half time, uh, plus 3 halves is 4 halves, which is just 2. But I would just write 4 halves. And here you have y. Um, 1 plus negative 2 is negative 1. So that means you have x squared y to the negative 1. Um, and then you have to make sure that this is a positive exponent. So you have really x squared over y. OK. OK, last question. Whoa, that went by really quick. So you can see that I have um, 30b here. And you're dividing two exponents of the same base, meaning you can subtract the exponents. So I really can just write this as negative 5.5 to the 2 thirds minus negative 4 thirds. OK. Um, so that will be negative 5.5 to the 6 thirds power. And of course, that's just really negative 5.5 squared. And negative 5.5 squared is. I should know this, but I don't, so, oh, 30.25. Well, that's nice. Um, so those are the review questions that I wanted to go over, you know, on the internet. And again, uh, we are right now on approved comments. So, so if you do have some questions for me, you can uh, post those comments. I'll get an email about it. I can uh, reply. Or if you want, you can email me or Alternatively, you can wait till either Monday or Tuesday and ask me questions about um, either this video or review questions in general. So I look forward to your comments and questions. Um, thank you. And thanks for watching. Bye.